You're listening to the Get Out and Drive podcast with John Custom Car Nerd Meyer and Jason Old Car Guy Car. We'll be bringing you gearheads everything you never wanted to know about cars and why they should be on the road and not in your garage. Are you ready to get out and drive? Well, welcome back to another incredibly emotional roller coaster of the Get Out and Drive podcast. I am John Custom Car Nerd Meyer. And I'm Jason, old car guy, car. We've got Dalton Summit here with us today. And for some reason or another, he's driving a GTO that should not be on the road. Um, um, by my by my choice, you can just do whatever you want with any car you want. Uh, I'll let Dalton uh, tell us about his uh, his GTO. Yeah, guys, uh, this is uh, the Holy Goat, which is aptly named because it's it's got a lot of holes in it. Uh, it's kind of a rolling colander of a 1970 GTO. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, it was used as target practice for uh, about four decades uh, by a couple of brothers down in Texas. And I bought it uh, out of the great Mopar Horde auction, wherein this was, I think, the only non-Chrysler product down there. Uh uh, and it shows, but uh, the uh, it, uh, it looks pretty nice from my video here on my screen. It's well, yeah, I got the Walmart seat covers, you know, uh, -huh. uh, uh I got all the air conditioning going right now, so it's yeah. really comfy. Yeah. It's a little leaky. You get new new weather strips and stuff for the side oh, the side windows. Yeah, uh, and some caulking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, I got the wipers working. You know, I got uh -huh. my got my strings here. Oh, perfect! Front and the wall. It's a two-man operation. It's actually, a two-man. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yes, like it's right out of the Red Green show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the stuff on my channel is, but uh, but this thing is. It takes the uh, rat rod thing to the extreme, I think, or uh, and pushes the boundary of uh, legality. I, I would say. <laughs> nice. It is a real GTO. It is a numbers GTO. Yes, it is a real 1970 GTO. It was originally uh, medium blue with a black vinyl top. Uh, base 400 car, you know, turbo 400 automatic, 10 bolt open diff uh, originally. Had a factory eight track player. It was actually a pretty well appointed car once upon a time. Uh, not so much anymore, though. You don't have a build sheet or anything on it or. I never sent off for the PHS. Uh, uh -huh. you know, Pontiac has that where you can send them the VIN and they'll send you some stuff. But okay. I uh, never really bothered for so you know. <laughs> but it's like 120 bucks, and that's better spent dumping it in the gas tank, as far as I'm concerned. So, Dalton, how much did they actually pay to take that off the property? I mean, was that the case, or did you actually put money towards this thing? You. You will not believe it, but I actually had to pay money for this, Whoa. and I had I had to drive ten hours one way to to actually. I had to voluntarily go and acquire this thing. I I know. But, so you didn't lose a bat or something? Uh, no, I kind of won it by accident, actually. <laughs> oh shit! <So> I, <laughs> oh no! I, so I I went to the duct tape drags down in Tucson last year. And uh, I'm driving on the way back in my Corvette, and I'm on the highway and looking at my phone like you shouldn't do. And, uh, you know, I see Steve Magnante made a post about the car, so I, I looked into it a little bit. And I said, oh, what the hell, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw 200 bucks at it. And it was, it was like three weeks later that I got an email just out of the blue that said, you, you won a 1970 GTO. And I, I was like, well, I, I had completely forgotten that I had even bid on the car. And I was like, oh, hell, where, where is that thing? And it's way down in West Texas. I mean, way out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I almost didn't even go get the car. I was like, yeah, 200 bucks, screw it, I'll pay them, and they can just go junk it, and I won't even go get it. But I, me and a buddy decided to go get it, and I'm glad we did, because it had turned into something pretty cool. But, it almost didn't happen. What is the story that made the car that people started shooting at it? What do you have the story behind that? 
Yeah, a little bit. Uh, from so one of the brothers, uh, Howard, is still alive, and uh, I actually just met up with him on a, on the road trip we took to bring the car back to Texas. Uh, and ba- the story is nothing real dramatic. I mean, it's like a you know it was just a car back in the seventies, and uh, he uh, his brother had a friend who had a girlfriend who had this car in the mid seventies and she drove it something broke in it and she sold it to his brother's friend who was going to use it for parts and never used it so it sat out on the ranch then they all got bored decided to start shooting it and it never stopped (laughs) (laughs) i'm guessing some alcohol may or may not have been involved in that decision i mean i don't want to make any uh suppositions but i I would i would i would assume that you are correct yes because obviously if you've got a perfectly good 70 gto sitting in a field chances are you're probably not going to do that but at the end of the day it is what it is and i just want to paint a picture for our listeners obviously on podcast you can't see what we're talking about so dalton Paint the picture of what this car looked like the day that you pulled up with your truck and trailer uh, and and got it loaded on, like be as detailed as possible. All right. So we pull up down there. It's in the desert. I mean, the car is literally buried in a sand wash. Uh, The entire interior of the car is full of dirt and cactuses and just junk. I mean, up to the transmission tunnel, about a foot of it. Uh, the hood or the uh, roof rather is crushed almost flat they've been pushing it around with a loader flipping the car over i mean for years uh there's massive holes torn in the side of the car from the forks of the loader it's got 10,000 bullet holes in it i'm not even that's not an exaggeration at all uh and the the driver's door is bolted to the a pillar but dragging on the ground somehow because the a pillar is pushed back so far uh that it it's just you know it it couldn't even you couldn't even open it shut it anything it was actually dragging up the trailer when we loaded it up uh but you know it for the most part it's relatively complete i mean it's got a motor and it's got transmission in it uh, and that's what initially kind of drew me to the cars under the hood. It still has, it still had the carburetor, had the intake, had the exhaust manifolds. Uh, I mean, uh, lots of parts that were, that are worth a little bit of money if they haven't gotten shot, you know, uh, <laughs> and, but it, but it is actually other than the valve covers, it was totally complete and it even still had one of its factory exhaust splitters on it. Uh, for the du- factory dual exhaust, they had the stainless steel exhaust splitters on the back, and it still had one of those. Uh, but we, I mean, it just looked like hell getting dropped onto the trailer by the front loader. And I definitely was kind of questioning my own sanity for uh, all the way home after that. But it sat around for a couple of weeks before I started digging into it. And well, all the body work was done courtesy of an eight pound sledge. So yeah, that's how you do it. Is was that the birth of your channel with this car? No, so I I did uh I I tried, you know, I kind of dipped my toes in a little before that, and I was all over the place with content and uh I I didn't really find my groove until I got this car. Mm-hmm. And I found a niche with I don't know, there's something to be said about uh taking something that is just so totally far gone but still giving it a chance to live again. Uh, and I think that kind of resonated with people. So it really made the channel take off and yeah, but there's some hate, but not, not as much as, you know, you might think there's the purists hate it, but, but some of the purists love it, uh, you know, because it, it's one more GTO that you're not drinking beer out of. Right. So, uh, <laughs> Definitely. you know, it, it could just be scrap metal, but it's not. And Dalton, for those who don't know, your YouTube channel is called Pole Barn Garage. And yes. this is where, if you guys are interested in watching um, some of the outtakes and some of the goings on with this uh, holy goat, uh, make sure you head over to YouTube, look up Pole Barn Garage. 
and you'll find Dalton over there. We'll have some of those links down in the uh, description of the podcast. So one of the things I that, that drew me in very, very quickly to that car, uh, besides the uh, door kind of falling off and the roof caved in and, and, and all the bullet holes and the cactus and all that stuff, like, uh, was the front headlight panel on, on those cars. Now, those cars, they weren't fiberglass. They weren't metal. They were... Uh, John knows exactly what they're made of. I don't know their their their, their GM term for it is Endura. Endura. Yep. So they're they're like an injection mold type front end, and that part, believe it or not, was still on this car. Yep. Yeah, it's still there. Uh, it looks like they prefer to use bird shot on the uh, nose of the car. It's got. I mean, it's looks like pimples all over. It's got. There's still BBs stuck in it, actually. Uh, and but it is actually straight and salvageable it is you're right it's kind of a wonder that it's still there because uh, you could strip that off and use it and that's that is worth something uh it's amazing that that didn't get scavenged uh, but it does retain its you know its gto-ness you know? yes so now do you have uh, explain to us what all you did to obviously you did a ton of things and people can see that on your channel but describe what you did to make it roadworthy did you use uh, pieces of other cars? Do you have glass in it? How much is it roadworthy? Sure. Uh, roadworthy is a very relative term. That's why so I, I ask. Under, that. Understanding, <laughs> yes, un- understanding that uh, no no state troopers from your state are listening to our podcast. But go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, when I drug it in, I mean, first step was just kind of rip the sheet metal off the car and uh, be able to put the car together. Cause I mean, there wasn't one thing that was going to fit on this thing after being pushed around by a loader for so long. Uh, so it was a lot of sledge work, a lot of porter power work, just, just to get things to sort of look like they fit. Uh, and in the meantime, while I was doing that, I, uh, most of the cars built out of spare parts. Uh, I'm a Pontiac guy, but I like everything. But uh, I've had a lot of 70 to 72 A body Pontiacs. So I got a lot of parts that weren't necessarily good enough for better restorations, but they're plenty good enough for this. Uh, and so, you know, I had a lot of suspension parts, the springs, and I had a, the engine is uh, an extra 400 I had. The transmission is an extra turbo 400 I had laying around. The rear end was uh, somebody else's spare rear end that they sent me. Uh, so everything in the car is used for the most part. Uh, brake system is, uh, I had the master cylinder, the booster just laying around, use them. Uh, I think the only new parts I bought were pads and, uh, calipers. And I reused all the brake lines in the car that were in it. So for safety, you know, (laughs) (laughs) so folks, if you are within earshot of this podcast right now, and you've got your very own bullet hole rilled 70 GTO. You can find all those parts you need to get that thing back together at racingjump.com. Make sure you head on over there, search for those parts that you need. There's no cost. You can even sell parts if you want. There's guys like Dalton out there looking to buy them. So head on over to racingjunk.com. Look, I know everyone wants to get out and drive, but it's been difficult with the price of gas lately. But get out and drive doesn't have to mean physically driving your ride. Get out and drive means sharing your auto repair skills with the next generation. Hashtag what drives youth. Get out and drive means watching a classic road trip movie or something with a cool chase scene. Get out and drive means hosting a car show or a cruise. Get out and drive means working on that project car to get it ready to get out and drive. Get out and drive means get those toy cars, Hot Wheels, remote control cars and die casts and burn up the pavement. Get out and drive means supporting organizations that help keep the automotive industry and hobby alive. What does get out and drive mean to you? Let us know by leaving a message on our listener hotline. Just go to getoutanddrive.com, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the listener hotline button. So you built your car from stuff you had laying around holding the door open in your garage. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, parts, just like like we call the car guys call it you know, like floor parts. I don't uh-huh. want to ever throw this away, and I'm a hoarder. And exactly. this this I'll just jam this on another car. That's fantastic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's a few 
there are there are some goodies in the car, but they're very few and far between. Uh, you know, uh, Holly has uh, partnered with a lot of not a lot, but the carburetor, the radiator. Uh, you know, it's got a few kind of key uh, key goodies to it that I that I selected, but I didn't want to make the car. I, I've always been the type that I'd like to do things that a regular guy can go do that doesn't necessarily have all the extra money. Right. So, uh, you know, if it's something that somebody could assemble at a swap meet and junkyard parts, uh, that's, that's the route I would rather take just because I can get sponsored parts. That does, I'm not going to take everything I get my hands on because that kind of puts it out of the realm of the regular guy. So is your glass on the car like super clean or there's not glass in it? Um, well, it, I mean, if you've seen the Windex commercials where the birds fly into them, they yes. just fly right through this one. Oh, so there's no <laughs> glass in it. There's, does it have rear glass? It does not. There is no not. rear glass. It has a windshield. Uh, nice. We did put a window in it. I had to buy a brand new windshield for it. Like a GTO dune buggy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but actually, you drive it, it's, it whistles a little bit because of the bullet holes. It's kind of like a dog <laughs> whistle going down the road. <laughs> that's but, uh, that's fantastic. The it does keep the deer out of the road. Oh, yeah, I've never never even come close to hit one. And all the dogs go crazy for like half a mile in any direction. Oh, but, it's yeah. making noise that you can't hear, so that's fantastic. Oh, it's supersonic. So time-wise... <laughs> How long do you have from from the from the fantastic decision that I need to buy this wreck to roadworthy? Uh, so I bought it in October of twenty one, uh, late October twenty one. I started work, uh, I think, the first week of December of twenty one, and uh, the car was running, driving, and on the road by March wow. of this year, uh, and it, it's improved some since then, but the core of the car was complete by then. Mm-hmm. Roadworthy enough to turn the key and go. Right, right. Uh, and I took it to a Autorama uh, World of Wheels car show where I will probably never be allowed to return to. Uh, they did not appreciate it as much as most of the people appreciated it. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? No. It's only done. I mean, like, like at the end of a uh, the end of a carnival, they got to sweep up the garbage. At the end, when you left, they had to clean your area. <laughs> I did. It left plenty of. It, it, it marked its territory there. That's for sure. Nice. <laughs> Sell little baggies, little dime bags of patina. <laughs> yeah, I actually did. I actually kept a, a cup of of dirt that I took out of the car, and I and I I, I, I give that away to people that are uh, you know deserving to have such a fine gift wow but, uh, I, well, I, I am I, actually uh, i was going to ask you if it has if it has glass in it we'll have to get you a uh a national get out and drive day uh from october 2nd this year we'll have to get you a drive day decal for the window yes yeah we can put that in the front window for sure oh and maybe yeah. it'll cover up where it broke uh, oh wow because the frame wasn't square and it broke yeah, you, you could say that. I used four could... tubes of, of urethane to put this in. And like, because I, I couldn't get the frame square at all. Mm-hmm. So we took sheet metal, like four inch wide chunks of scrap metal, then self tapping screwed it around the window frame and what kind of looked like the window. And uh, <laughs> then we just glued it with about four inches of urethane all the way around. It's real pro job. I, Safe Light's been knocking down my door trying to get me ever since then. But. <laughs> I, I'm like, not for hire. Like when yes. you were done, did you just tap the roof and say, that ain't going nowhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I knocked on wood and prayed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, one well, thing that's... about driving down the road with that type of situation is you at least got the wind helping you push it into place and keep it in, in, in place. Right. So, I mean, right. if you're driving backwards, you're on your own. But uh, hopefully if you're keeping it forward, driving down the road, you'll be doing all right. Yeah. I'm curious to find out a little bit about your background, Dalton, to say, um, you know, how did you get to where you are today to be able to do what you do with your cars and, and on your YouTube channel? Uh, do you have a background? Do you have an influencer? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have some big influences. Roadkill. I mean, obviously, uh, those guys are great. And, uh, uh, Vice Grip Garage is a huge influence, too. Uh, Derek over there. 
I like to say that I'm kind of like uh, if Derek has a cousin Eddie, uh, I'm kind of like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, I those are big influences on me. But as far as you know, being able to do what I do, I just I mean, I, I work a regular blue collar job like anybody. I'm an industrial electrician uh, by trade. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not rolling in it. You know, I, I work with what I got. So, but it all kind of worked with the YouTube thing uh, that that's been a, a hell of a ride. They're pretty good experience. But, uh, we got a couple other projects on the channel. I'm doing two a 69 Plymouth Roadrunner that's been rolled and burned. Uh, to kind of follow in the same vein as the Holy Goat here, it is the Rolled Runner. Nice, and, uh, nice. I love, I love fantastic car names. Right, right. The must. Uh, and then a uh, a 1959 Ford Fairlane that uh, my son, who's 11, and I have been kind of rebuilding. You know, do it low buck budget kind of rebuild, body paint, and. Uh, uh, Definitely outside the realm of the GTO, because it'll actually wind up being a fairly nice car. But, uh, but you know, there's something for everybody. What is what is a little bit of your background other than your channel? Uh, like, where did you start being interested in cars? What's your spark? Oh. Where did you start from way back then? Uh, my dad, yeah, was always big into cars. And he still is. Uh, you know, he's 64 now and he's still going strong. I mean, he pumps out cars quicker than I do. Uh, so he, we always had a cool car growing up. I was always out in the shop with him working. Uh, you know, he helped me with my, I had to buy my own first car, but you know, he kind of, he helped me along with it, you know, showing me how to do body paint work for the most part. Uh, the mechanical side of things I kind of self-taught, but uh, but he was a body man for a long time, so he's pretty good at that. Uh, yeah, they've always been around the family because of him. Yeah, you know, we, I don't know, we never did any racing or anything like that. Really, never even did car shows or anything. It was just to have something fun to go drive around in. And that's good because if we don't have those influences in in our lives to carry on that passion, you say you got an eleven year old who's who's kind of following you and helping you with that build, and the whole. The whole premise behind what we like to do with with our podcast is to try and get that word out there and and make sure that you know whatever we're doing we're getting youth involved and we're trying to make sure that they understand the, the principle behind the old cars and the, and the preservation and even if it's doing what you're doing with this rolling wreck of a goat that it's one more that's on the road and not being crushed in a junkyard somewhere right so that's that is part of, of, of what get out and drive really is all about is we, we love to hear these stories. Uh, your, your son, how, how involved is he? Is he getting his hands dirty and greasy? Is he turning wrenches? Like what, what is it that he likes to do? So I, when it, to me, father and son project too many times means dad does the work and son watches, holds the flashlight, gets yelled at. Right. Right. Uh, and that's not how my dad did it with me. And so that's not how I'm doing it with him. Yeah, we rebuilt a 390 for his 59 Ford. Uh, and he did everything except for the heavy lifting. You know, I mean, I had to drive, I had to put the pistons in, I had to lift the crank up and put that in. But uh, like he rolled all the bearings in, he disassembled the engine. He, he did at least half of the work, which is, you know, exactly how I want it. He's, he's out block sanding it right now, uh, you know, because he's into it and he, and he digs it. But, if you let a kid work on it and get his hands dirty, get involved, but then you let them experience the reward of that work, which is just key. Let them have their moment, which we all love as car guys, right? You know, that's why you go and make yourself miserable working on the junk, right? Is so you can get that 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 moment, that high off of, you know, oh, wow, this really this finally came together kind of thing. That's pretty addictive. And I think you get that into a, a kid's head early uh they'll remember that you know i don't know if it'll keep them out of trouble i know it always got me into trouble but you know <laughs> well you know what they say you you teach a kid how to work on cars or how to race and they'll never have enough money for drugs right like it's <laughs> it's, its own drug <laughs> it's true 
Have you been hassled by uh, any police or anybody on the street or been pulled over or anything because of the car? Uh, no. No, actually, I, I okay. knock on the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I haven't been pulled over yet. Uh, I've had, I, I had a cop, when we took it on its road trip, you know, 2,000 mile road trip through four states, uh, I mean, we passed plenty of them. Nobody, they didn't even look at it. Uh, but I did have one Kansas state trooper. He took a picture of it and I gave him a sticker for the channel. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, my local cops, they think it's cool. I mean, they don't mind at all. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, really they don't, at least here in Missouri things, you know, I, I don't know how it is elsewhere, but technically this car is perfectly road legal here. I mean, all the lights work, everything works. The car, you know, it's safe ish you know, mm -hmm. mechanically, oh, sure. uh, and you only need a front windshield. Actually, I don't even think you need a windshield in Missouri. I might've gone above and beyond with that, but I know, I know I'm in St. Louis and I've, I've driven around some vehicles that were, uh, pretty sketchy. Yeah. And that's just their daily drivers. So, <laughs> right. I had a, I had a 73 Torino that, uh, we, my brother and I drove around and, and we proceeded to drive it into everything in the whole entire in the whole entire St. Louis County area, trash dumpsters and walls and buildings, and we did everything because now the statute of limitations is kind of up on that. Um, <laughs> we we painted it up and we spray painted it up, looked like a demo derby car, and cut the exhaust off it, and we went cruising up on uh, up on South Limburg where all the show cars and everything were on on uh, on the Friday and Saturday nights, and we drove around with this car. It looked like it just won a demolition derby. <laughs> and that was one of the best weekends of my life. <laughs> I bet. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> it was a fantastic time. Then we yanked the motor out of that, and it went into my brother's Torino. That was a 351 Windsor. Or it went into his Maverick, out of the Torino and into the Maverick. And we oh, put a Windsor fun. in his Maverick. So Yeah. That was certainly fun, but we had fun with a parts car before we yanked it apart. Definitely. That's the way to do it. So you've you've done uh, you've done a couple of vehicles on your channel. Obviously, the the Holy Goat seems to be getting uh, a lot of attention right now. What uh, what aspirations do you have for the future of project vehicles? Do you have anything lined up? Yeah, so I got I got the Roadrunner. Like I said earlier, uh, you know, it's it's a real '69 Roadrunner, 383 four speed car uh, that's trashed. Uh, and boy, big Pontiac guys can give you some heat. Uh, Mopar guys. Oh my God, uh, they they are they're ravenous. Uh, they they uh, they do they they appreciate what I'm doing a little less, but uh, I, I have no intention of actually repairing the car. Uh, it, it's pretty bad, uh, but it's pretty so it's a solid car. Somebody could restore it, but not me. So my whole goal with it is just I took it out of a junkyard. Uh, it was definitely just going to get pulled for the fin and the title right and then again get swapped mm -hmm. on to something uh but you know i didn't want that to happen so i got it out of a junkyard out in great bend kansas and uh i'm just going to put it back on the road as is i bought a motor home did the you know classic cut the motor home up yank the 440 out of it 727 uh so that's going in there it's gonna be ultra budget but you know it should actually have a little pep to it uh it still has the uh uh, eight and three quarter in it with three fifty fives uh, and a sure grip. So yeah, that's that's a big bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's going to be the next one. I was kind of bouncing between it and my son JD's car, uh, and I've kind of lately I've just been focusing on JD's car, the fifty nine Ford Fairlane, because uh, it's pretty close. And uh, we just drove it for the first time actually uh, just a few days ago. Uh, after we reaped that motor we put in it was rusted solid out of the truck we pulled it from uh and we tore it apart salvaged everything we could we reused the cam reused the lifters we oh, hand wow. lapped in the valves uh we did a dingle ball hone on it cleaned up the cylinders as best as we could and i bought the cheapest parts i could find on the internet to put it together and uh just went full send with it it, it runs pretty good uh Back to the Roadrunner for a second. Did, did, yeah. you, did you didn't happen to pick that up from my buddy Chad Ehrlich? Sure did. Yep. Nice. <laughs> nice. 
See, the world is small, isn't the it? The world Jason? is small. It is totally. And I think I think that um, totally off topic, Chad would be an awesome interview. Uh, just just saying. Um, <laughs> but I think that the whole point of being a car guy, having a YouTube channel, putting our presence out there for everyone to see, is what kind of brings the community uh, closer together. Uh, you mentioned, you know, having. Uh, Derek from Vice Grip Garage as kind of a of, of inspiration to what you do. And again, to bring the community together, we do a live stream, which is kind of partnered with the Get Out and Drive podcast on Thursday nights uh, called the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. That's my YouTube channel and a partner of mine um, who has a YouTube channel down in Kansas. And that's how we met Chad. Uh, and Derek will be a guest on our show uh, coming up in October. So uh, for those of you who are listening now, make sure you head over to the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. We got lots of great stuff going on over there too. So, part of part of what we're doing, I guess, and the point I was trying to make was networking. You know, we we do a lot of this stuff because we have the same interests. We love cars. We want to preserve them, no matter what condition that might be, uh, and we want to basically just pardon the pun, but we just want to get out and drive. There's there's that main goal for a lot of people we we don't build them to sit in the garage we don't build them to trailer around i mean although some people do but you got to get out and drive them uh besides this car right here that you're sitting in now what is it that you love to get out and drive in uh i drive a 75 corvette uh almost every day uh to work uh and that's it's just my driver i mean it's exact it's it's an old car i put a lot of work into it but it's just a car to me. I mean, it's a cool car, but it's just a car. And almost all of my cars are like that. They're transportation, first and foremost. Uh, and you're kind of nailed it there. I mean, uh, that's uh, something I think is lost on people today is these were just transportation at one time. They were cool. They were badass, but they were just transportation. Uh, and they're they're not meant to be sitting in a museum. They're not meant to go to your local cruise night every friday and that's it get drive them you know and there's if you do it right and you don't even got to do it right i mean case in point <laughs> but <laughs> you got to have but, a sense of humor to be piloting that wreck for sure but uh, you if you if you do it at least sort of right there's no reason any old car can't be reliable and used mm -hmm. as a car uh, I mean, that's what they're for. I mean, they, they work just fine back then. What's the, <laughs> what's the problem? Uh, I, I wouldn't be scared to drive this pile of crap literally anywhere in this country because I put it together. I know it inside and out and I can fix it with like a rock and some bubble gum if I have to, you know, I mean, it, they're so simple. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's fantastic. Have you, or do you have any, uh, any, do you have, are you going to take this to Pontiac nationals? Uh, no, not this year. Uh, well, I think it already happened this year. I yeah. don't know. I'm not real big into that scene, really. With That's, the, you know, the I, and I was only guys. talking about going to going to Pontiac Nationals just for shock factor, or if yeah, anybody yeah. has talked to you about going. I have been asked. I actually got asked by the POCI guys uh, mm -hmm. to go, uh, but I, I might make it next year, just like you said, for the shock factor, just mm -hmm. kind of to you know ruin it. Uh, yeah, which is that's kind of my goal with everything. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it, wearing a bathrobe to a black tie event. Exactly, exactly. There's <laughs> cut off jean shorts, and you know, yep. Yes, so that's what that's what I'm into. That's why I took it to the World Wheel, uh, you know, on Autorama event because that's right. yeah, that's kind of the epitome of the show car guy. I mean, I parked next right. to a guy in this beautiful cameo Chevy pickup. He's out there polishing it with a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And then I had hordes of people gathered around this pile of junk sitting. Please in there. tell me you got pictures of of you dusting it off with a uh, with a uh, a California car duster. Oh, of course, of course, California car duster on the roof. Yes, yeah, that's in the video on that too. Uh, yeah, I did have a California car duster. Uh -huh. uh, there's, uh, it kind of got shredded. Uh, this thing would say it gets stuck in the little holes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it didn't hold up very good. I was I was not very impressed with the California car duster. I, I'm afraid they need a Kevlar one. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Definitely. Yeah, so you, your your review of California Car Duster, it does not work on vehicles with bullet holes. No, no, uh, it doesn't. And that was not on the packaging. Uh, no. So, no. Terrible, terrible. Re- and and when we thank you for your review. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to supply it. <laughs> <laughs> there goes my chances of getting a free one from California Car Duster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry man <laughs> no all all is good uh one thing that i want to that i that i like to uh ask uh people and, and we kind of will get to this in a little bit when we do our uh our lightning round of questions before we oh, get yeah. done here uh mm-hmm. i always like to find out what the what the first car that you had that kind of was a project car what was the what was that first car that kind of put you in the motion of doing what you do uh all right well my first car is actually kind of three cars but uh well before i was 16 i I bought i saved up my money over summer i bought a 65 mustang coupe uh and uh it was just an atrocious pile of garbage i mean probably made this gto look good uh i mean the the shackles were sticking through the trunk pan i mean it was total garbage there's no way i was ever going to drive that car but I spit polished that thing up and butchered that body to make it look as good as I could. I bought all the red shaker can vinyl dye, cleaned it up. And, uh, you know, and then I traded that off for a 76 Ranchero, uh, which I also kind of spit shined up, polished it up. Then I traded that car for a car I still have, but I drove through high school. It's a 72 Pontiac Le Mans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that started my love of Pontiacs, uh, that car was way too much car for a 16 year old. Uh, it had a half dead 389 in it. I mean, just in an open diff, it would just burn that one tire off forever. It would blow the dipstick literally out of the engine. The rings were so shot in it, but <laughs> man, I had so much fun in it. Uh, and I kept the car. I still have it. Uh, that, that car is definitely what set me down the path of you know, that this is what I want to spend every single extra penny I ever make on. I guess I'm grateful. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, it, that's the most terrible thing you could do is just to think you want to work on cars. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most rewarding and the most terrible thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yep, 100%. You've got some questions for uh, for Dalton, you said? Yeah, I think that we should do our lightning round, and uh, and we've got uh, ten questions, Dalton, that we're going to ask you. Uh, basically, one word, one or two word answers. We're going to go through them very, very quickly, and it's just basically what comes to the top of your mind. Okay, when we uh, ask these questions, got it. All right, so we're going to start here right away. Question number one: What's your favorite movie? Vanishing Point. Okay, which leads me into number two. What was your favorite uh, car or car, movie car? Movie car, uh, two-lane blacktop 55 Chevy. And we already asked this question, what, what was your first car? 65 Ford Mustang. What's your current car? Lots. <laughs> What's the worst car you ever owned? This, <laughs> 1970 GTO. <laughs> Facebook Marketplace or eBay? Marketplace. Uh, favorite music genre classic rock who's your favorite actor Glenn Eastwood LS Coyote or Hemi none <laughs> yes you, yes you got to answer it oh god <laughs> LS and last but not least back to the future one two or three one absolutely yeah that's great. Thanks for doing those questions with us. That's one of the things that a lot of guys like uh, when they say uh, talk about their experience here on the Get Out and Drive podcast is doing that little bit of a lightning round. So thanks for being a team player and uh, providing us with some answers. Definitely. Dalton, you told me that you're going to be a participant in the No Name Nationals here in uh, Sykeston in, uh, in Missouri. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, that's uh, going to be an event at Jeffers Motorsports Park in Sykeston. Uh, and I'm not, I'm just going there, but, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's, it's kind of a cool story to it. Uh, the AHRA is put it on, uh, Dallas Brown and, uh, John Wilburn is promoting it. And, uh, 
uh, it's worth a look if anybody's interested in that. Uh, everybody there has to have 500 YouTube subscribers. So I, I signed on to it early, but a lot of these guys have started from nothing and they've been working as hard to get their 500 YouTube subscribers as they have been on their cars. <laughs> uh, but there will be a burnout competition, uh, pit bike racing, eighth mile drag racing, that kind of stuff down there. And I'll be there. Uh, you know, Uncle Tony will be there. There'll be a few, few guys down mm-hmm. there and, and a whole bunch of these guys that have just started from nowhere and, and built their channels. It's pretty cool. Well, that's awesome. Those... That seems like that's in my backyard because uh, uh, I'm I'm out of St. Louis Metro, and uh, I'll uh, I'll see if that fits in our schedule, and uh, I'll certainly uh, keep keep you informed. Yeah, yeah. It's September thirtieth and October first uh, is the dates on that, and that kind of leads right into National Get Out and Drive Day on October second. It's the first Sunday in October, so if you guys are listening to this podcast right now and you're heading down to Sykeston to the big no-name nationals, what an opportunity to grab yourself a Get Out and Drive Day sticker, support the cause, and get out and drive your ride, even if it's on the way home or you're towing it back on a trailer, whatever the case may be, (laughs) make sure you head on over to the Get Out and Drive website and register yourself for National Get Out and Drive Day. Well, very cool. Well, I'm sorry you have to continue driving that rack that you have there, but uh, it is... is, uh, Hopefully, because we're in the same state. I think you're on the Kansas City side. I'm on St. Louis side. Yeah. You're plenty far enough away. You don't got to worry about it. (laughs) Okay. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. If I see you, I'll uh, I'll make sure to cross over and just get off and wait. You should. You should. (laughs) You never know what might happen. I can hear those dogs whistling behind you. You got to not pull over, right? (laughs) It's a warning. Yes. Yes. Well, cool. Well, very cool. Um, And uh, one more time for everybody. um, go ahead and shout out your socials and your YouTube channel so where everybody can see you and uh, they can find you. So you can check me out on YouTube, uh, Pole Barn Garage, youtube.com slash Pole Barn Garage. I'll bring it right there. Um, I got a Facebook page, Pole Barn Garage, and I'm on the Instagrams, whatever, uh, you know, whatever the kids are calling it these days, uh, Pole Barn Garage. Uh, you know, it, it's all the same stuff. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us for a little bit, Dalton. And uh, I, I wish you luck with your car in the future, and uh, hopefully we'll cross paths. Well, you might hope so. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for a ride in the Holy Goat. No, dude, if we, if we meet up, I'll take. I'll let you drive it. Oh, well, my. I'll let you get the first ticket. Wow. All right. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. That sounds like a deal. All right, man. Well, thank you for hanging out with us. Speed over to our friends at RacingJunk.com and sign up for a Pro Club membership. Use the code GETOUT to receive a discount when you sign up for a Pro Club membership. Cruise on over to our website, GetOutAndDrive.com, for all the info you never wanted to know about our podcast. Hit us up on our listener hotline, be the first to know what's happening, get industry news, and grab your Get Out and Drive merch. Connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow us on Twitter at Get Out and Drive Pod. What drives you?